next speaker, uh, the last speaker is Haley McLean, also speaking on Agenda L3. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you also have five minutes to speak, and uh, if you could provide us with a written copy. Where would you like it to go? Uh, to Ms. LaBeouf, fourth one over, if you have it, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Haley, and I am a wife, mother of three, and was an elementary and secondary school teacher for six years. I stand here before you and ask you to shed your preconceived notions, to shed your political affiliations, to shed your career titles. I appeal to you to simply be the man and woman, husband and wife, mother and father that you are. I ask that you listen to what I'm about to read to you with an open, unbiased mind. I challenge you to challenge yourselves whether the following text provides the educational context that you yourself received in school, that you expect when sending your own children to school, and the education those who elected you had in mind when doing so. The following texts are three examples of books readily available to our children within our school libraries. The first book, It's Perfectly Normal, uh, by Roby H. Harris. Currently, if you do look online, you can see that there are two school copies in elementary schools. This book contains excerpts and illustrations involving sexual activities and sexual nudity. It has several illustrations of various sexual positions and many illustrations of new children, adolescents, and adults. Further illustrations within this text include visual demonstrations of masturbation, child showering, and a variety of hetero and homosexual acts. How does this serve our children ages 4 to 14? The second book has already been mentioned this evening, and it's one that I actually read 20 years ago. Um, and I'm definitely not a naive, prude individual, and I specifically, and I read a lot of books, and I specifically remember the graphic terminology in this book myself. At this moment, I will not read excerpts from this book, Push, because it is absolutely too disturbing, graphic, and can be triggering to survivors of sexual assault. Push discusses explicitly the sexual and emotional abuse that an African-American man inflicts upon his young daughter. The abuse is explicit and leaves nothing to the imagination, detailing incest and everything from genital molestation to forced vaginal penetration, from a father to his young pubescent daughter. Are these really the descriptions and literary stories we desire our youth to consume? If this content wasn't inappropriate enough, the language use consists, but isn't limited to, excessive and, and frequent profanity and racially derogatory terms. Push has a profanity count of 314 including the F word 83 times, the N word 22 times, and the P word describing female genitalia is also mentioned on numerous occasions. I could go on, however, I urge you to read the excerpts that will be provided and see for yourself. Please explain to me how depict depicting a black family where the father uses a pubescent daughter for his own sexual desires, which by the way is illegal in Canada, is in any way benefiting and enriching their learning experience. And on that note, uh, today on Twitter there was a post made by the GECDSB PR team, and it reads, The National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women has designated, or sorry, was designated after the murder of 14 women at a Cole Polytechnique de Montreal in 1989. This day is for honoring those who have lost their lives to gender-based violence and amplifying the voice of survivors. I find it amazing that a book such as Push can be within our school system. By the way, right now there are three copies in our secondary schools. And yet, GECDSB can post virtue signaling all over Twitter. Finally, book three, Looking for Alaska by John Green. I'm just going to read you some quotes from that book. On page 186, it says, Have you gotten a blowjob yet? On page 210, Laura unbuttoned my pants and pulled my boxers down a little and pulled out my penis. And then she wrapped her hand around it and put it in her mouth. Uncomfortable yet? I am. On page 217, it says, I can't make out. I'm too drunk. But you could hook up with me. So I did. She moved my hand from her waist to her breast, and I felt cautiously, my fingers moving slowly under her shirt but over her bra, tracing the outline of her breast and cupping one in my hand, squeezing softly. We moved together, my body between her legs. That was on page 217. 
This book was, has a profanity count of 95, including the F-424 times. There are 25 copies of it that are both elementary and secondary schools in the GEC DSB. Again, I ask you, what educational value does this book bring to our children? These tests are intentionally or unintentionally desensitizing our children. I've grown up opposed to censorship and encourage the love of reading, regardless of the genre. Excuse me, I lost my spot there for a moment. I'm working on it, ma'am. The Greater Essex County District School Board is committed to provide, this is found on, as their uh, mission statement on their website, is providing safe learning, teaching, and work environments for students, staff, and community members. Safe schools promote responsibility, accessibility, and academic excellence. I cannot for the life of me see the connection the above books have in respectful, civil, and an excellent academic environment. Finally, I debated on whether to share this with you and those in attendance today. However, I'm hoping my personal story will express my why as to what brought me here this evening. When I was a young girl, four or five years old, I was sexually abused by a male family member. Thankfully, I'm not done, ma'am. I will finish my, my last paragraph. Thank you so much. Thankfully, that abuse was brought to light, and as the psychologist who discovered what was happening to me said, had this not come to light when it had, Haley sure would have surely would have continued to be misused sexually by this man. The years following were filled with endless lawyer interviews, interrogations that felt like they would never end, feelings of not fitting in with my peers, adults looking at me differently, court trials, you name it. That was an extremely traumatic time for me. However, when I walked the doors of my school, I knew it was a safe space. My teachers were aware of my struggles and encouraged and supported me along that journey in coordinates with my mother. What I can say to you is this. My first experience seeing graphic sexual content was extremely triggering and set my progress back. Had pornography been discovered while pursuing the school perusing the school library, school no longer, nor would reading, have been a safe place for me and an escape for me. I, am confident, I can confidently say that it would have set me back adding to my trauma, not taking away. Please consider all of your students when deciding what material is available to them. I cannot imagine how detail, detailed descriptions of cunnilingus, low jobs, lesbian sex, anal penetration, and rape and incest could possibly add value to such innocent young lives. I thank God I, and myself, I myself wasn't exposed to such material in the environment I sought refuge in. I apologize for going over, but I do appreciate your time. Thank you for your for your sharing. Uh, I don't know how you have the briefness to to share this, but I appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from trustees for clarification? No? Thank you very much. Thank for you for your time. Thank you. Moving on 